Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Jones Mountain Twin. This board features Jones's cam rocker camber profile. So what you get is camber through the middle of the board to the outside of the inserts, and then rocker in the tip and the tail. That camber section is gonna give you all the load, pop, snap, and drop, while that rocker section is gonna give you ease of entry in and out of turns, as well as more optimal powder float and a better spot to press and butter on. This board is available in 149, 151, 153 wide, 154, 156 wide, 157, 159 wide, 160, 162 wide, 163, 165 wide, and 168 wide for you goddamn satchmos. I rode this board at Arapaho Basin on a day that had low to high visibility with overcast skies. You had about 12 inches of fresh snow, but you also had ice moguls of death underneath that had frozen from the warmth the day before. He had chopped chunder, perfect corduroy, kind of just a mix of everything. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. Cool thing about this board is it has a very predictable all mountain freestyle flex. Softer tips that are accentuated by those rocker zones, stiffening up right where it meets the camber through to the middle with a fair amount of torsional flex. It's not overwhelming and it's also not underperforming. You notice that you can ankle steer with it when you need to. When it comes to the stability of this, since the last time I rode it, it feels like the nose and tail got just a hair stiffer and they just absorb chatter a little bit better. So you don't have to worry about as much flap coming through. You're still gonna get a little and they'll slightly resonate back underfoot. In really rutted out choppy terrain, if you keep your knees mildly bent, you're gonna be fine. Pretty much the only time I was worried about getting bucked was when I got it in that fresh pow and then I'd hit like an iceberg underneath because there was those frozen death moguls. That would buck me. It hurt. You'd feel that energy come right up through your ankles, knees, hips into your lower back. Yeah, I'm getting too old for this shit. But overall on a groomer at speeds, a little bit of kinetic energy, not enough to cause a lot of foot fatigue. It's actually a fairly damp ride in that regard. Is this the snappiest board out there? No. Is it consistent? Yes. It's very easy to load up the camber section of this board, roll back on the tail, and it's gonna pop. You're gonna get up in the air. You're not gonna have to worry about it. So launch a side hit, pop a roller, you know, maybe ollie a low hanging rope. Not a high hanging, just a low hanging rope. You know, it's not gonna be a real issue. It's just consistent. You don't have to worry about it. the snaps there. It does what you need it to do. Now with jumps, would I hesitate to hit one with it? No. Did I hit any with it? No, they were buried under a foot of snow and they were not getting dug out that day. So I had to go hit the Hollywood hit and a few other side hits that I know very well at A Basin. And in the past, because I've seriously ridden this board every year since it's come out from Jones. Thanks Petey, my rep, he's the man. And I wouldn't hesitate, small, medium, large. It's gonna get the job done. It's got more than enough pop. You can let this thing load up and then compress through the transition and it'll throw you. You don't have to worry about it. Like I said, I've ridden this thing enough. I would never hesitate to hit a jump with it. It's solid. We're probably about halfway through this review, but you know what I need you to do? Go down and click the thumbs up for me. Helps the algorithm, lets people know that this is a good video. And while you're down there, why don't you subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the other programming we've got coming out for you because we've moved from content to programming. So, so much programming. Is it a super easy board to butter? No, and they've added basalt stringers into it, so it takes a little bit more effort to engage the nose or the tail when you're buttering. With that said, expect a little bit of fight. You don't have to worry about it though. You're just gonna end up leveraging your weight more right where that camber meets the rocker, whether you're on the nose or the tail, and you basically have to sit over it, keep that knee bent and push into it. You're gonna feel that resistance and when you go to a disengage your butter, it's gonna pop out for you. But by and large, if you know what you're doing, you're not gonna have a problem. If you don't, well, there's other boards out there for you. When it comes to jibbing, it takes a little bit more effort just because as I said, they have kind of stiffened up the tips on it. You're gonna press into it and press a little bit harder. Get Use a little bit more speed than you think. You're not gonna have a problem. You hit the end of the feature, it's gonna snap out. When you go sideways, there's more give in this than the pro version, so it really does cradle around the feature. You feel it really just like lock in and hug perfectly with it. But speed, speed's gonna be your friend. I mean, 
This wouldn't be my second choice for a jib board from Jones, but it it, it works. It, it does what it needs to do. This board can turn, this board can carve, and this board can leave a trench. It's good at that. The side cut rips and grips. It's very easy to engage it from toe to heel. You notice that it's very fluid, it's very nimble, but you don't have to be very assertive with it. So when you're ankle steering, you can do those minimal control turns for those short, tight, quick setup ones. What's nice though, it, with a little speed, it becomes zippy. You get a little more power out of the tail so you can slingshot it out of a turn. And that helps when you really lay it over at the edge of the trail and you're trying to traverse back, you can push into it, get it to slingshot you out, transition it over to the other edge if you need to, and you'll be able to hold your speed going into the next one when you go to do that again. You wanna lay it over, just lay it over. Do not worry about it, do not hesitate. It's gonna get the job done. Rider in mind, this is for that rad dad all mountain freestyle rider that's gonna have one deck to get everything done. It's well balanced, it's a jack of all trade, master of none, but it makes you balanced and fair for everything you're trying to do. Like what we're doing here? Want to support us further? Swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I like that mystery of you having to go over there and find out what it is for yourself. Sport's fun. Getting to ride it in a foot of pow in mid-May? Solid. Kind of upset I couldn't hit any real jumps with it, but you know, it's mid-May and there's a foot of pow. I'm gonna go smash it. That's just kind of how life is with it. At least I got to hit some rails. It does feel more stable than the previous version, especially when I was taking it down some faces. I just kind of noticed that and getting it into like some chunder, or some chopped out pow, didn't really seem to buck as much as the previous version did. Overall, great board. This thing's dialed. If you're a red dad, you can only have one board. You want a directional twin. This isn't a bad option for you. Comparable boards, the Rome Agent, the Nitro Team, the Ride Shadow Ban. Binding recommendations, the Jones Mercury, the Ride C8, the Union Force. This has been my review of the Jones Mountain Twin. Do you have one? Are you thinking about getting one? Are you thinking about getting bindings for it? Why don't you go watch one of the videos for one of the recommended bindings I just mentioned? You know you need to. Go down that YouTube hole.